On September 29, we brought you the Article 4 consultation report produced by a team from the International Monetary Fund that was in country earlier this year. This week, the executive directors of the IMF met in session and had reviewed the report in full and has insisted that measures are needed to strengthen the economy as Belize continues to face significant vulnerabilities and challenges due to its high public debt, large fiscal and external deficits, and declining international reserves. In that meeting with the executive directors, it was agreed that the adverse weather conditions have also posed difficulties to the country, and with that compounding Belize's challenges, an improvement in growth performance is crucial. But with all this said in the report, just how much credence does the government give to the IMF report? Well, we asked Dr. Carla Barnett, the Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance. We do give a lot of credence to the IMF report. I wouldn't want to, to suggest otherwise at all. Um, we might not agree on every little bit, but in general what the IMF um, has said um, is, is reasonably true. Um, we are going through difficult times. Um, we have a very, um, a, a very difficult situation with our productive sector. We've seen where export earnings have decreased uh, for various reasons, and the report um, will speak to those, does speak to those. Um, we have a, a, a fiscal deficit. Um, and it's been made worse because of the arbitration award. So we're seeing these one-off payments that um, that are increasing the fiscal years, the, the, the fiscal deficit in the years in which um, they they occur. Um, so we understand that there are difficulties. There is no getting away from there are difficulties. Um, indeed, I would um, say that government. Um, faced up to the, the, the evolving difficulties even before the IMF report came out. The IMF directors stressed that placing public debt on a downward path is a key priority and they have welcomed the important steps taken by the authorities to contain public expenditures and increase revenue. They, however, recommend that the GST rate be increased, that the public wage bill be reduced, and there be a reform of the pension plan for civil servants and strengthening public financial management. The 84-page report by the IMF also noted, and we quote, growth is expected to average less than 2% in the medium term. The envisaged fiscal adjustment would remain insufficient to significantly reduce the very high public debt. Large external imbalances driven by large current account deficits repayment of the super bond and remaining payments for the nationalized telecommunication company would reduce international reserves to uncomfortable levels. The further withdrawal by global banks of correspondent relationships with Belizean banks and low capital buffers in some banks are key threats to financial stability. Insufficient fiscal adjustment and weaknesses in the banking system are significant risks." End of quote. The Article 4 consultations are done annually and includes observations made via assessments as well as proposed solutions that would seek to remedy the challenges. In the 2016 report, it noted that very few of the recommendations of the 2015 Article 4 consultation have so far been implemented, and the rising fiscal and external vulnerabilities in the context of worsening macroeconomic prospects only highlight the urgency of strong action to address them. The International Monetary Fund concluded its Article 4 consultations with Belize on September 21, 2016. It is a report whose executive summary speaks of a weakened fiscal position and the country's public debt going higher. As we mentioned regarding the IMF report for 2016, there are some recommendations that went to the government of Belize that would prove as stepping stones in rectifying the economic challenges. In the section dubbed Rebuilding Investor Confidence with Strong Fiscal Policy Action, the report noted that the government of Belize had acceded to the problems at hand and that the Barrow administration had noted that increasing the fuel tax in late 2015 was the first step toward fiscal consolidation and that they are considering further enhancing with the collection of revenues, including moving zero-rated items under the GST 
either to an exempt status, which would prevent refund of GST paid on inputs, or to the standard GST rate of 12.5%. While Dr. Carla Barnett would not commit to any particular action that would be undertaken by the government, she did note that long before the IMF report came out, there were movements being made to tackle the financial issues. Government had set up an economic policy coordinating team. Mm -hmm. um, this team was set up um, before the IMF report came out. It was set up even before Earl. Um, and I had been asked to chair that team. Cabinet had asked me to chair that team, and I had agreed. And this is a team that comprises um, uh, CEOs who are um, CEOs in, in key economic sectors. So um, the financial secretary, obviously, economic development, um, tourism, agriculture, those, those um, kinds of sectors. And then we had Earl. And um, Hurricane Earl exacerbated a situation that was already difficult. Um, and so when I was invited to join the cabinet, um, that economic team was already in place. And that team continues to be in place and continues to look at um, the state of, of play and, and the policies that need to be done to, to, to correct the situation. The IMF report also noted that the government of Belize is also considering raising the standard GST rate to the regional average of 15%, which would result in about 1.1 percentage points of the GDP. This, however, would be a last resort for the government to do. Dr. Barnett told Love News that there are two things to look at, look at in fixing the economy, namely the short-term issue and the long-term of creating economic policies. There's a short-term issue of correcting the fiscal deficit, um, but there's a longer-term issue of coordinating economic policy beyond correcting the fiscal deficit. Um, and both of them are going at the same time, and they have to work together. Um, we have been having discussions um, with the ministries already um, to, to come up with cost savings, um, expenditure reprogramming. We've done this before. Renee, you know, we've done this before, you know. Um, and when we were meeting with, um, with the caucus of CEOs um, last week, in fact, um, one of the things that I said to them was some of them around the table were involved in doing it when we had to do it. Mr. Waite, for example, who is the FS, was part of the team that corrected the fiscal and debt issues that we had in the 2005-2007 period. Um, and if you look at the IMF reports that go back to that time, you will see that it was even worse in that time. Uh, and this is not to say that this is not a difficult situation that, that we're in. It is to say that this will not be the very first time that we have been faced with needing to sort out our fiscal issues and that we have done so successfully. So we are setting out to do that. Um, in the 2004, five fiscal year through to like 2006, seven, um, we reduced our fiscal deficit um, in really dramatic fashion. Um, but we had no choice but to do it in dramatic fashion at that time. The adjustments that we have to make um, in this period are, um, are not going to be as large as we had to do, but we have to be sure that when we do it, we maintain um, whatever adjustments we put in place to achieve the targets that we want to achieve over the next two, three fiscal years. According to the report, the government of Belize has also acknowledged that the 2013 wage agreement resulted in a sharp increase in the public wage bill and agreed that it should be contained going forward. They noted that a wage freeze will not fundamentally change the fiscal problem, but will nonetheless be considered. 